What's good people? I am Jay Diggs. I'm here with Mixwave and in this video I'm going to show you how to route contact instruments in Reaper. Let's go! All right, y'all, here we are in Reaper. Let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is drag contact from our browser over to our track area. And we're going to get an option here. It's going to ask us to uh, set up the uh, default routing. But what we want to do is actually hit no first because first we need to set our routing up because this configuration that we have here is not what we want. And this is the first thing that we need to do is get this output section set up. If you don't see this, you can go right up here to this corner here and hit outputs. You want to make sure outputs is checked. And then you're going to see this down here. Now what we want to do is set up this output section so we have multiple outputs for our different instruments or for your drum kit, which I think is what we're going to do today. Let's just do a drum kit today and let's work with Tony Royster Jr. drums here. Uh, so before we open this instrument, actually, we want to set this output routing. So we want to hit the plus button right here. And what I'm going to do is keep this really simple and make eight stereo channels. OK, so let's hit eight for quantity and for number of channels. We want to hit two. That's going to give us eight stereo channels. All right. And you're going to go to the host output right here. And you want to just hit that very first one. These may be different. They may say something different, but hit the very first one and that'll take care of uh, what we need to do. Now, we want to make sure ascending output assignment is checked. All right. That's going to let all of our eight channels uh, create themselves in succession. And we want to hit delete existing channels before creating new ones. All right. And that's going to get rid of these other channels that we have in here. The aux outputs will always be there, but the stereo and surround channels, we want to go ahead and get rid of those. All right. Let's hit OK. All right. So it made eight stereo channels and you can set up mono channels if you want. But I found that the easiest way to do is just to make your stereo channels. OK. Now, before you uh, go any further, you want to set this as your default setting. That's going to be really important for what we need to do next. So you want to hit this button right here and we want to hit save current output section state as default and we want to hit all formats. All right. And the next thing we're going to do is close contact. So you want to completely close the instrument out and reload it. So remember last time we did this and it asks us this question if we want to build the routing. This time we want to hit yes. All right. And the reason we want to hit yes is, as you can see, it brought up our eight stereo channels and it added our eight stereo channels here um, in our track area. Now, it also added some of the other channels that we didn't assign. Um, it's going to show unassigned here. But what you can just easily do is just go ahead and delete what you're not using. Um, I'm going to even delete these auxes. So just want to highlight those, hit remove tracks, boom. So we have our eight, eight stereo channels. Just a quick tip for Reaper. What I actually like to do is I like to get rid of these tracks in the editor view because these are basically going to work as aux auxiliary tracks. And I don't really need those to be in my editor window here. So what I'm going to do is go to my track manager. OK, and I'm going to actually hide these tracks in my editor. And we want to leave the contact track there because that's where we're going to do our MIDI sequencing. And we're just going to leave these tracks in the mixer view down here at the bottom since they're just working as auxiliary tracks. So here we are in Tony Worcester Jr. drums. And from here, we're just going to route our drums through our outputs um, in my mixer. So I'm going to go to my mixer. I'm going to go to my kick. And what I'm going to do is instead of using stereo one, I'm going to start with stereo two. I'm going to leave stereo one just to be a general stereo channel for room mics or whatever I want to leave in that main stereo channel. So let's put kick in stereo two and I'm going to hit the kick and you can see it's coming through stereo two right there. And then snare, I'm going to put that in stereo three coming through stereo three. All right. And let's just jump over to the hi hat here and I'm going to put the hi hat in stereo four. And as you can see down here at the bottom, coming through stereo two, three, and four, and you still see some things coming through stereo one. Now that's our room mics and our overhead mics coming through there. I'm gonna jump back over to our main view and Reaper here. And as you can see, 
we're getting our level and our different auxiliary tracks now this is great because what i love about this is i can go in here to the effects and i can add um specific effects or individual effects on each of my drum parts so i can just put a compressor on the kick i can just put an eq on the snare and i can put uh something else on the hi-hat so that gives you a lot of um uh, creativity and a lot of control over the kit individually so another quick tip for you if you are doing a drum instrument what's really cool is if you've gone ahead and put your whole drum pattern on this one midi track and you want to uh, get a little bit more detail with your edits all you have to do is you can right click this and you go to items processing and you can choose explode midi item by note and hit that and it'll separate all of your parts into uh, different MIDI tracks right there. You can kind of get a little bit more detailed with your processing, which is awesome. Just gives you that much more control. And when it comes down to mixing, you have your aux channels with your audio flowing through. If you want to bounce those down, go ahead and make your audio tracks and bounce those down to audio and you're good to go. All right, guys, there you have it. That's how you route contact instruments in Reaper. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Or even if you don't have questions and you just want to say what's up to me, I don't know. What's up? Leave a comment down below. You know, I need love too. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe. We have more tutorials just like this one. We have videos on all of our instruments and all of our plugins. And until next time, I'm Jay. Peace. <laughs>